Gretna Green sits right on the border with England, a factor that made it an essential stop for eloping couples from the mid-18th century onwards, when Scotland's marriage laws were far more liberal. Gretna Town itself, though, is a more recent creation, developed as a garden town to house workers at the enormous munitions factory built during World War I. Thousands of couples still descend on Gretna and Gretna Green to get married. Other visitors are tempted by the shopping, and a few are here for the football. My name is Jonathan Wheeler. I'm a filmmaker based in the gorgeous county of Dumfries and Galloway. But for many years before that, I was a solicitor in England. And during that time, I had a few brushes with football, whether advising the chief executive of Leicester City all once serving a High Court winding up petition on Notts County. And as a lifelong Leicester City supporter, I know that football can bring its share of highs and lows. But recently I've become quite disillusioned with the way that money is corrupting football at the top level. I've become far more interested in football at the bottom of the pyramid. And this season I'm going to be following Gretna FC 2008 in Scotland's Lowland League, a club that has also had its share of highs and lows. If you've seen the football documentary Welcome to Wrexham, well this will be similar. OK, apart from the fact that there's no Hollywood millionaire and there's no Netflix budget. In fact, there is no budget at all. There may be no money, but there will be plenty of heart, hard graft, and true community spirit. Yay! If you step one foot over the southern boundary of Gretna, then you'll find yourself in England. Cumbria, to be precise. So with some justification, Gretna can call itself the first and last senior club in Scotland. Unfortunately though, in recent years, the emphasis is more on the last. Let me explain. Scottish senior football has five tiers. The top four are part of the SPFL, the Scottish Professional Football League. At the summit sits the Scottish Premiership, a league where two teams from Glasgow play ten other teams to decide which of them should be crowned champions. Next comes the Championship, League One and League Two. Tier 5 is split geographically between a Highland League and a Lowland League. Each year one team from Tier 5 has the chance for promotion to the professional leagues. Last season Gretna had what one might describe as a bit of a nightmare, winning just three games and finishing 20 points behind the next team. Normally of course that would mean certain relegation. But fortunately, one team was even worse. In a winner-takes-all final match, Gretna beat Edinburgh University and avoided the dreaded drop into the junior leagues. Change was definitely needed. In steps former Gretna player and local businessman, Nicky White. Uh, it was one of the original 2008 teams when the, the club reformed. I uh, played for three or four seasons before going to Dalbuti for a year and then I came back as a, a player coach and then I was a coach for a few seasons and then I left to be manager of Locker Thistle. And, uh, towards Christmas last year uh, I came back initially to help set up the under 20s team, um, obviously started making inroads and that and then before you know it you get roped into doing more and more and more and you're uh, then on the board helping the committee and things like that and then all of a sudden you've got the title of director of football which I don't particularly like but obviously that's what that's what Ian's tagged us with now so we'll stick with that. A struggle, a struggle. Um, obviously with the way things happened the season before that we were left with really nothing. Uh, obviously Brian came in um, with not a player. Um, obviously put a squad together as it got better throughout the season. I believe the talent, there was a lot of talent there. Um, it was just probably a little bit young and a little bit naive at the time. Um, we had some, you know, some good one-off performances and then obviously just done enough at the end of the season to, to, to stay up in the end, which was in itself a massive achievement. 
just to basically get back to to roots and you know get the community back involved. I feel over the last five or six years the club's been going in one direction. Um, and my view is to come back, you know, try and get the best local talent that we can. Um, and then obviously from there it was a case of you know try to find the new manager who was luckily uh, already in the door. So whenever we've had successful teams at Gretna, whenever I've been involved, it's always been a mixture of Dumfries and local boys and then the, the best that Carlisle have got. And I think that was that was the plan, so that's what we've we've tried to tried to do. I don't even think it's just for Gretna. I think it's for the region as a whole because now, obviously, with Dalbiti dropping the year before, Thrive have went a different route. I just believe that obviously we need we are now the, the only club in the area. So any young, you know, aspiring footballer, you know, if they're not making it at Queens or Annan, they're they're playing South of Scotland football. So we are hopefully the, the option and so long, you know, long may it last. The new manager tasked with changing Gretna's fortunes this season is Vinnie Parker, who finished last season in goal. Well, it's my first stint as manager, obviously, but I've had three stints here. So when I, when I first uh, came to Gretna, um, it was under Owen Alexander and it was under the, it was called the, the Skill Seekers um, at the time. Um, so we were full time here, but we, we done the boots. We packed the kit, we trained full time, um, so I was lucky enough to be involved with the first team. At the time we were in the Unibond League, um, I managed to make a few first team appearances there when I was 16, 17 and oh, I loved that, I loved that environment, I loved being full time. Um, then we were fortunate, fortunate enough to, to go into the third division at the time in Scotland and I was there for a season as well before I moved on to, to Albion Rovers. Uh, my second stint came when it was Gretna 2008, obviously after the, the kind of high profile demise of Gretna. Um, I came back and it was, it was Stuart Rome, it was Rome, it was a manager at the time. And I played the first ever Lowland game, uh, game, so I did uh, for three of at the time. So I've been, I've been in Lowland a long time now. Um, at one point I think I held the, the, the record for, for most appearances uh, and like, like I said to you earlier probably hold the record for conceding the most goals in that league as well but it was a good stint we had a good, really good side um, at, that, at that time and, and we competed in the Lowland um, then obviously I've came back again at Christmas um, and I, I really enjoyed that it, it was a battle but um, I came to try and help keep the club up and I felt a, a, a massive we played a big part in that. I had some really good performances, especially the last game of the season when it was against Edinburgh Uni and we, we needed to win and I had a really good game that day. Um, so I thought I'd done alright for being a 39 year old goalkeeper who, who was alleged retire, retired, but three stints I've had at the uh, Radon. I work for Scottish Water, so I work in development operations. So I work for uh, new connections, so like for people, especially businesses and big building organisations who want to apply and connect to the, the Scottish Water Network, um, they work with me and they'll, they'll deal with me. So ah, it's a job I love. And, and last season we survived by the skin of our teeth, there's no denying it. But we had some really good performances and there was a lot of games that we, are, we could have got a win or could have got a draw. So it's fine margins in that league. So we need to see progression this season. And I think the people that come and watch us and the people who have obviously employed me, they, they need to see progression as well. So pre-season's been good. Um, training's been really good so far, but the proof will be in the pudding come the start of the season. It's not even July, but pre-season has started. Exceptional. I thought the leaders in the group stood up really well. Even before the game, I was asking us to be play, playing the game at a high tempo. Didn't want the game to stop, but they judged that themselves on the on the park and realised we might have to slow it down every now and again. And, and I thought they'd done that really well. Yeah, we were really pleased. Um, obviously, today we've eight new players in, so it was about getting a bit of familiarity and a bit of relationship between the guys. Um, I thought we controlled a good chunk of the game. I thought. Probably on another day we'd like to maybe score two or three with another couple of chances.
So a 2-0 victory. Now St Caddox might be a tier below, but when they were here last October in a cup match, they won 6-1. So I think that's progress. If you're not familiar with the Gretna story, then if I was to say that Gretna FC once graced the Scottish top flight, almost won the Scottish Cup final, and made it to the UEFA Cup, then you'd think I was mad. Well, it's true. The crazy years started when a millionaire businessman and philanthropist called Brooks Mileson suddenly appeared at Raydale Park. I no, no, I can remember at the time, obviously, like I spoke about before, we were full time and uh, at that period, like we were painting walls and stuff like that, and there used to be a stand behind this goal and uh, all of a sudden there was a, an Aston Martin appeared one day and there was a kind of slightly dishevelled fellow sitting in the bar with, with Rowan, who was the manager at the time, and he was introduced as Brooks Milestone. Um, and before we knew it, there was the stand was sponsored by Crest Sportswear, or our kit was Crest, and that's how it kind of started. You used, used to be sponsored uh, by Crest at the time, and I believe at the time he was trying to take over Carlisle United, and for one reason or another it didn't work out, and like I said, Rowan and that managed to bring him on board here, and listen, it, it was exciting at the time. Um, obviously, it never ended, never ended very well. But um, you certainly um, noticed when there's an Aston Martin sitting at the car park at <laughs> Gretna Football Club. So, no, I remember, I remember it really well when he first came in, and obviously it just grew and grew and grew from there. Um, and obviously, this is what this club will uh, be remembered for for a long time. Um, it's, it's part of its history. Obviously, we're a new club now. But if you ask anybody all over the world, probably they'll always. Uh, Reminisce it, it was the Brooks Milestone days and they got us to the Premier League and stuff like that. So no, but I remember at the very start when he first came on board, yeah. Three successive promotions took Gretna to the Premiership in 2007. During their first top flight season, it was bad enough that they had to play their home matches in Motherwell, but then their benefactor fell seriously ill and later died. Within a few months, the club was liquidated. The dream was well and truly over and the future looked bleak. Determined to keep football in the town, the Gretna Supporters Society founded a new club, Gretna FC 2008, on the 2nd of July 2008. A junior club at first, it then became a founder member of the Lowland League in 2013. The ground is now owned by the Raydale Partnership, a community group. Just eight miles separate the historic town of Annan from its much younger neighbour, Gretna. In footballing terms, the towns have gone in opposite directions. Annan Athletic took the SPFL place left by Gretna FC's demise and last year survived their first ever season in Tier 3 or League 1. A really impressive achievement that they'll certainly be looking to build on this season. Now, pre-season in Scotland can be really tough. It's the beginning of July and at midday today the thermometer tipped 15 degrees centigrade. Thankfully tonight kickoff is at 8 o'clock, so the temperature has cooled down a little. Get ready for the big South East Dumfries and Galloway Derby Day. Well, in the end, a very even game, apart from the quality of the finishing. But hey, Anand Athletic were playing the likes of Hamilton Ackies and Falkirk last season, 
so it's no disgrace. And a crowd of 372. Not bad on a balmy evening in Gretna. Coming up in episode two, there's a trip to deepest Galloway, Scotland's summer deteriorates even further, and it's the start of the Lowland League season. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and click for notifications. And come on a Scottish footballing journey. <laughs>